back home in Maryland, uh, about to get tatted uh, at Heavy Hitters uh, with my guy P-Loc. So uh, come check it out. And then so shifting into your new team, I want to ask you for both teams. But So on Atlanta, who do you think's got the worst pain tolerance if they're getting tattooed? <laughs> worst pain tolerance? I don't even know Atlanta. Uh, you about to throw under the bus, bro. Worst pain tolerance? I can't even answer that one because there's a lot of guys on the team that don't have tattoos, you know, so. So give me Detroit. You know the Detroit guys more. Detroit. We got a lot of people who's tatted on Detroit. Let me see. That's a tough question, bro. That's a tough question. It's whoever doesn't like needles a lot. Yeah, it's we asked PJ, no hesitation, said mellow. For real? No hesitation. <laughs> he, said, he was like mellow 100%. <laughs> I got to see somebody get tatted. It's great. That's, 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 the, that's the real thing. I have never seen somebody get tatted before. Yeah. So I was able to, you know what I mean? But I was able to, because when you, when you come in the locker room, you could be like, oh, yeah, it was nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You're sitting there jumping but, you know shaking. I mean? Yeah, yeah. I was like, if I was able to see it, I would be, I'd give you a better answer. Yeah. But when you come in, you go, oh, yeah, man, I was white. You get capped easily. Everybody says it doesn't hurt once it's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah, we asked PJ and Book Knight. They both said mellow, like, without even a thought. They must have saw him get tatted. Yeah. You know. Must have been in the room with him. Well, they said he uses numbing cream yeah. for all of his tats. So, well, me, I don't think that's bad because people get put to sleep. Yeah. Nah, you know what I mean? Like, people get anesthesia and it's people who, you know, like, just because I feel like some people got regular tasks and they just want to like, go to sleep, you know? Sometimes you just don't want to have to feel it, you know? But, but you don't think it's part of the process? Like, my whole thing is, obviously, it's got to be dope to just wake up and you're covered. You don't got to fucking be going through shit. Right. But you don't think it's part of the process? Like, we're kind of like, it's like, yeah, right now it sucks. But it's like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's worth it at the end. I think it depends. I think if, you, if, if, if it's your first tat ever and you get pulled to sleep, you get a full back. Yeah. Or whatever is tough. But I feel like people who, a lot of people who get those already had tats. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It is like, you know what, bro? I just want to get another one, bro. Yeah. And it's chill. Well, Uzi did his entire front and back, like, cover up under yeah. anesthesia. And yeah. it was like 10 artists. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Like, crazy. woke up fucking blasted. I think he did two days. Yeah. That's Ja. You seen Ja just got his entire back. He went under for that. That's crazy. And it's like four or five artists on it. As an artist, what do you think about that? I'm a little, I'm a little uh, yes and no, bro. Like, I, I also, well, I feel like I'm gonna get a lot of shit talking because I don't have any. Yeah. But I feel like I like the concept that you have to earn it. Yeah. So I like that concept. And there's a lot of people that like, they'll sit there and, and they'll take it even if that shit does hurt. But then I also see it from like athletes and tattooing so many of them that first of all, their time is like really limited. Yeah. So I feel like for them to complete a full bag, they're going to have to go for at least like a week straight, you know, at least if it's just with one artist. But uh, getting it done all at once, it saves a lot of time and then you're getting put to sleep. So it saves a lot of pain. Um, I've heard that even when you get put to sleep, you still wake up with like, you know, certain little like side effects like you're laying so much on your back that like your tailbone hurts or like your yeah. shoulders are like sore. So I feel like you still wake up with like certain pain. It's just not like tattoo pain. But um, I don't know, I kind of like me personally, I feel like it's kind of cheating. Yeah. Yeah, like I'd say take it like how you took your three days or like Sadiq, how he's taking, you know, fucking seven days now. So that's what so, I think. But then again, I don't have any tats, so. <laughs> You know. But what about, okay, and then what about just the, the aspect of working with several different artists on one project? Like, from the outside looking in, I feel like you could run into a lot of issues with, like, oh, yeah. styles, like, you know what I mean, going together, or just, like, overall, like, scheme working together? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think I could see it now. When you see, like, sometimes uh, those artists that do put up, like, the, f the full day, right? You'll see the back or, like, the front, and um, it'll look like five different pieces. Yeah. Because, it, you know, one artist has, like, his own flow, but then when you have five different people, they're all trying to, you know, do their own style, and they're trying to match it. But then, on top of that, think about, like, trying to tattoo and, like, stretch the skin on one side or even shading and wiping, and then the other guy's here, so Doing you're, like, thing. moving him. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard to be, like, consistent with that, I feel. Yeah. So you're definitely going to look... I feel like it's going to be, like, different styles, but... 
some people don't care. They just want to get tatted. So yeah. I think to each its own. For you, you've, you've tatted a lot of guys in professional sports, you know, boxers, you've done, you've done NFL, you've done all that. Who takes care of their tattoos the best? What's, what, what sport? Damn, that's a good question. Um, I'm not going to lie, I think NBA. Um, and this ain't because he's sitting right here getting nah, tattooed right now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I haven't tattooed that many NBA players either, but I feel like they just, I feel like even the nutrition is a little different, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I kind of see it. Like, they, they're a little more disciplined when it comes to working out, when it comes to what they put in their body, how they eat. And then um, I think because of that, even if they don't take too much care of their tats, I notice when they're like hydrated, their skin just looks a little like yeah. like softer. It's, it's weird. No, but I was gonna say, it's also the least like roughest, like football you're getting fucking, uh, okay. yeah, that's you know, true. tackled nonstop. Boxing, you're getting punched everywhere. Yeah. Like scraped up, different scars and all that. I feel like the NBA, I mean, you guys do get scratched up like crazy, like on, on your arms and stuff, but I feel like, I feel like, yeah, that makes sense, like from the outside looking in at least. Yeah. And That's then true. just not, let's say not healing wise, but let's say like taking care of them. Who's been, or, or how you had like, when you're tattooing these athletes, right? It's like a different clientele. So when, when somebody's a, a professional athlete, like you and me, I took a week off from working out when I got my leg. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? Because you have to be in the gym. You have to be doing that. So what do you, from the artist standpoint first, what do you like advise to them as being like a, a player and like what they need to do? How can they go around kind of the normal healing process? And then as a player, how do you go about kind of making sure your tattoo doesn't get all fucked up because your workouts? Me personally, I'll recommend putting um, one of those like sleeves that they use. The, if it's yeah. like, yeah, like if it's on the arm, I'll tell them like put, put one of the sleeves over it because it's breathable and uh, just, if you don't do that, then just try to put, you know, your your ointment on it for the first week and then Lubriderm. If you're going out in the sun, try to do uh, the sunscreen after a week. Um, just trying to keep it like hydrated because I notice a lot of people, a lot of athletes specifically, they'll let them dry out mm -hmm. and then like they'll just completely forget about it. Once like the first week is over, they just stop using the ointment or they'll forget the ointment somewhere. And then they're just like dry, ashy, and, and then that causes them to just heal up lighter and faded. Yeah. So. I usually just try to tell them, just put ointment, lotion, anything that you have, bro, at that point. Because after like a week, I feel like that's when a lot of people just leave it alone. Well, because so, you're all excited the first week, yeah, I'm gonna take care yeah. of it, blah, blah, and then you go for the first road trip and, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, so what about for you? How, how are you, have you been on top of it? Yeah, for me, it's, it's something that work out a lot, so I'll either just try, try to like not cover it or cover it. So like for like my arms, I'll just make sure I don't wear anything on my sleeves. and. When I work out, make sure nobody's running into it, right? Yeah. So I just do like work out, don't lean on it, don't lay on it, don't let, you know, no contact. And then um, if I do need to cover it, then, you know, I just try to make sure I, I clean it even extra, you know, because it rubs up against the clothes and stuff like that. But now I usually, don't, I'm, I'm on it. I try to be on it every day. Um, and then once it gets past like the ointment phase and the lubriderm, make sure I do that every, I try to do it as much as possible. But uh, I feel like I could just see it. I could see it in the mirror, like, uh, it's looking dry or, yeah. you know what yeah. I mean? You could just feel it like, uh, this is not. It's not supposed to look like that right yeah, now. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know. Do you only get, have you got a tattoo in season or no? You're only off season? Never in season, no. Only off season. Yeah, only yeah. off season. I was gonna say that's probably a lot harder because yeah. it's like actual game. Right. I know last year Kuzma had a, um, like the wrap, like the after skin. And he hit a game winner that game. Oh, real. So I was like, yo, maybe it's a thing. <laughs> tattoos, tattoos give you a little you start getting attribute during boost. The season, yeah. For you, I want to talk more about what we talked before because I really liked what you said about that, where it's like you see open space. You see it as like almost like a puzzle. Um, how do you work on, like, you have an idea, let's say, the Blue Clues thing. Do you know, like, okay, bicep or arm, or are you just kind of like, I want that somewhere on the body, and you let the artist dictate that? I have to think about it sometimes. It's usually a mixture of both. Okay. Um, you know, for sleeve, it's different because I feel like I could put a lot of ideas on it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, I, I care about where it's at, but sometimes it doesn't matter. Like, for a portrait, I, like, I knew I wanted it on my forearm, right? Or, like, for the car, I knew I wanted it on the, the back. Yeah. But like shoulder, like like those big pieces, but then how it flows after that is kind of just how it flows, you know what I mean? I usually know where I want it at, like where I want the tattoo at, you know what I mean? Like for the most part, uh, but sometimes you might switch it, you know? But 
the idea does depend like on that. Like I wouldn't get the Blues Clues on where I got my logo at. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would get you know that more inside my arm where you can still see it, but it's not like the it's main not the focus. Base piece of it, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So stuff stuff like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then when you're working a sleeve. Um, I feel like the hardest thing, like for me too, whenever I got ideas, it's like, all right, I know I want this, this, and this. As an artist, how do you get the factors of like flowing it? Like, how do you get the in-betweens? Because I feel like that's got to be the hardest thing to do. Yeah, I usually like to get the main piece out the way, like at least have an idea of what you want the main focus to be. And I try to put that usually like in the front. Like for him, we knew that we were going to do the draft piece on the forearm. And that was actually the first piece we sketched out, but the last piece that we tattooed. Well, not the last piece, but one of the last pieces. Um, once I get that, I feel like everything else just kind of, we can collage it together. I usually ask them for a few ideas, and if they give me like a bunch, I, I kind of can like play around with how I position them. But if they're not giving me anything, that's where it gets a little difficult. Yeah. Yeah, so as long as they have like some sort of theme or idea that they want, I think from there I can kind of collage it together and and try to make it flow, but sometimes like um, when you're working with, uh, when it's like a like when it's like when it's a stamp, I feel like I can usually just do like smoke around that or something, something that'll make it flow with the body part. But if it's more like a portrait or, you know, anything that's like, I guess real, that's where it becomes a little difficult to figure out what I want to do around it. Cause you don't want to put smoke around a portrait yeah. all the time. Stuff well, like I was that. gonna say when he came to you and said, "Hey, I want Scooby Doo, SpongeBob, and a portrait of me and my mom," were you like, <laughs> "How the fuck are we gonna work this into his league?" Yeah, at first I was like, "How the fuck are we gonna make that work?" Because it was like cartoons and a portrait, so it was like, at first I was like, "Yeah, how, how's this gonna work?" But I feel like after he told me where he wanted it, then I was like, "All right." Yeah. You can figure this out. Well, that's why I'm saying you were able to make it flow. Yeah. Where like it looks cohesive, it looks good. But if like from if I was somebody and you were like, yeah, I want my arm sleeve, I want blues, clues, SpongeBob, and and a portrait of me and my mom. It's like I don't like as yeah. someone that's not an artist, I would be like, I have no idea how you're gonna make that yeah, work. Yeah, exactly. I would have been like, yeah, it was probably not happening, bro. <laughs> nah, I think Sadiq was very good at like just knowing what he wanted and sticking to that. So it wasn't hard to just put everything together and he honestly he wasn't like complicated when it came to how he wanted it he was like I know I want this here and I mean even if it looks weird to somebody else to him he's like it means something to him so I feel like that's all that mattered at the end of the day Sadiq for you when you get a new tat um, like I know for me at least when I get a new tat it's like I'm ready to go and get another one like a month after like it's like once once I feel it again I'm like, all right, I want to I wanna complete that spot. How long do you normally wait between your sessions, or is it more so just availability? Oh, uh, availability. <laughs> With him, it's, bro, he could, he could be booked up for like a year straight. Yeah. Almost then and there, you know, months. So it's like, if he's like, yeah, I got like this one day, it's like, I got to make it, I got to make it work. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's so true. It's, it's usually availability, you know? But that's dope that you're like tapped in where it's like, you're not just like, all right, cancel on somebody, you know, take me. Where you're like, yeah. realize like, you know what, he's got work, he's tapped down for the year because he's like that. Where like, if you have a day available, I'll make it work kind of thing. Yeah. Which is dope, because normally you don't see that. Like when I'm talking to like different artists and stuff, players will usually hit them up and be like, yo, I'm here this weekend, let's let, like make it work. You know, oh, so it's okay. cool that you're- That's usually how it is too. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's cool too, because um, he's not complicated like that. Where like, for example, right now he's in the shop, you know? Yeah. The, the past times I've been at his house or even uh, in Miami when he was training down there. But it's cool that, you know, he's still down to come to the shop, even though he's in, you know, he's a celebrity or athlete, whatever you want to call it, because a lot of them don't want to come to the shop. Yeah. They're like, nah, I need you to come to my house and get it done here. So I think that's cool about Sadiq. And what do you prefer, Sadiq? Like you like being at home, getting tired, like a private session like that or like for you, it don't matter. It don't matter just because the availability yeah. aspect is hard. You just want to get tatted, that's it. Yeah, during the season, I can't, so it's like, you know. Like if actually, if I if I wasn't able to, like, do this today, like, we probably wouldn't be able to do anything until, like, next season. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Like, next summer, you know. It's crazy. So my thing that I always talk about um, with people, and I always, like, the idea, like, I want to get this done so bad, but it's, a, like, an NBA tattoo convention type thing where, like, let's say summer league type vibe or like i don't know all-star break we have a convention where like we invite all the artists that like tattoo nba dudes they set up their shit with the clients and then we just have like a 
kind of party, whatever, in a in like some warehouse. Everyone pulls up, he's getting tatted at the same time and stuff. Oh, that'll be fire. Right? Yeah, that'll be lit. Yeah. I'll definitely be there. It'll be, but that's what I'm saying. You'll be able to get tatted, you talk <laughs> to one another, like everyone yeah. can see what, what each other's getting. Paint tolerance and, from everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that'll be crazy. That'll be fire. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, but we need the thumbnail. You gotta just, you gotta do it for us. We need a little like this. Anything else except for the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> you got, do you get anything of him hurting? <laughs> they don't get joy. Yeah, I got a couple of things. Yeah? You gotta, <laughs> so you, you gotta like stand over there, and zoom in from the back. No thumbnail. For you growing up, I'm curious. You said um, like you were always into tattoos, like even when you were young, doing the 25 cent, all that stuff. Was there like a person, like a lot of people obviously say AI and whatnot, um, but was there a person, like a celebrity, singer, anything like that, that got you into it? No, nah, it was just me, man. It was just weird. Like, I just, I don't know anything about you specific, but I just loved it, bro. I, even to like, they used to have like, these little fruit roll ups that you could like put on your tongue. Yeah, no, I know <laughs> tongue, what you're talking about, the tongue, yeah. It was yeah. Just, like, I was just, bro, I used to just love it. Damn, that, that's it. actually a that's crazy memory you just brought back. You used to be able to go like that right. and the print on it would go on the tongue, yeah. You'd have a zebra on your tongue? Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, what about guys in the NBA, um, just around the league, that like you, you've you seen their tattoos and you're like, damn, they got some nice ink. Like, who are a few guys? Bro, I ain't gonna lie, like a lot of the league has very quality work. I'm trying to think up top of my head. Um, Garrison got great, good work. Mm -hmm. um, say Lonzo, his yeah. sleeves are good work. Um, PJ got good work. Uh, so a lot of them, no, I just can't think about the top of my head anything. Um, I guess shout out to my boy Saban. Lee, he actually got some low key work. Yeah. I like him. Yep. He got like. Phoenix on the back. I was just gonna say, you got the yeah, Phoenix yeah, on the back. Yeah. That's in the the uh, Javanta yeah. font too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Font is, yeah. Is the Baltimore. Um, Did the same artist do that one? No, I think he went to uh, J and L. I think, yeah. right or no? So I don't know who. Yeah, I don't know. Who. So it might have been the same artist. I'm yeah. not sure. Yeah, yeah. J and L is the one that did uh, Javante's first. Oh, okay. All right, let's move to the Baltimore one. You did, oh, nah, he, so he did it first. Oh, okay, okay. The tattoo Gervonta, he wanted me to redo it. Oh, it was okay. like too faded. Yeah, okay, okay. But that font now, everyone uses that. A lot oh, of people I see use that it. everywhere yeah. now. Yeah. Some dude wants it tomorrow. The dude I got tomorrow, he wants it. Yeah? And he's from Baltimore, so he wants the exact same thing. I was like, can't do it, bro. Yeah. Gotta switch it up. No, I've seen that a lot. No, Saban does have, Saban does some dope, dope tattoos. Yeah. I've seen his stuff. Like, when you, it's crazy that you say that. You say like, oh, the NBA, a lot of the NBA guys have quality tattoos. When you think of the NBA like 10 years ago, it was like a like a thing, like why do NBA players have shitty tattoos? Because guys would walk around with like the craziest things or like the worst tattoos ever, like the N1 guy on his arm or whatever. <laughs> now we've we've come to the point where, yeah, where there's quality work, you know, in every single locker room. Everyone's going to now good artists. Um, for me, what I think is obviously it's a big part of social media. You're able to see like and, and find guys now. Right. Just why do you think that change has happened so like rapidly uh, in the NBA or just in professional sports? I definitely think it's social media. And then I think um, just even artists, bro, like there's just so many young artists that are just coming up and have better tools than, you know, people had years ago, like these rotary machines, mm -hmm. um, Pinterest, just a lot of things that they could really get stuff from. And then um, I think like the people growing up now, they're they're looking at like, Instagram and seeing like what everybody has so they want to go to like those artists or you know get like for example Steve he tattoos a lot of people that are in there um I think a lot of people look at his stuff and or, or even like pages like yours you know mm -hmm. like they can really relate like I tattoo a lot of athletes that I notice like I'll catch them like going through your page and trying to see what inspiration yeah, they can yeah. get for their own tattoo so I feel like it's just a lot of stuff out there that they could use now and yeah, I feel like it's just the same thing just circulating that they're just taking ideas from. Tell oh, me about for you. I think social media is a big part because, or word of mouth, because um, for me it was only like, when I was younger, when I first tattooed, I was 17. It was just like, who was in the area? Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, or you look up on Google, like tattoo shop. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's probably or, the worst thing you could do. Or you ask, <laughs> or you ask like, you know, I used to ask my uncle, like who tattooed him? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. 
But um, but now you got social media, you got a lot, a lot more, you know, opportunity. I just got lucky because I'm not on social media a lot, but the trainer I went that I went to, he just, you know, referred me to him. Mm -hmm. So I got lucky, but yeah, I use, I think, social media and media in general is probably the best bet. Yeah. I want to ask you more like basketball, a quick some basketball questions too before we wrap up. Um, going from Detroit, you come to Atlanta, you start playing with one of the best point guards in the NBA, Trey Young, right? How has that been for your game? Like you, you know, how have you been able to to kind of level up to be able to play with someone who's such a good playmaker like that? Yeah, he's great man, great player, um, a great guy. You know, I think he has a lot of, he brings a lot of attention to you know on the court. You know, with him. You know, driving the ball, trying to score it, like just him, you know, carving the defense, and, and it, he produces a lot of open shots for people. Um, so I think, you know, obviously his assists and stuff is one of his people know about it, but once you play, you don't realize like he, he really gets you open. You know? Yeah. Uh, so that transition has been good, man. Just you know, being able to. You know, I came through midway through the season, um, and it seemed like it was a seamless fit. So. Um, and you know and he does he does a great job of trying to you know, get everyone involved. So uh, it's, just, it's been good just to, to be a part of it. I feel like he's become one of the most like underrated players almost now. Like I feel like in the beginning it was like he was talked about so much. Right. Where now it's like people like call him overrated or people call yeah. him like whatever overhyped all that. Right. Where like he's now become underrated in, as a player. Right. And why do you think like that the media or just like fans in general kind of don't understand how good of a player he is or don't understand that like. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's, you know, whatever narrative we're trying to be pushed, I feel like people get behind it, you know. Uh, I don't really know too much. I don't really, like, try to pay attention to a lot of, like, what people say about, you know, people. I kind of just stick to myself. But uh, like what he does as far as, like, stat-wise and, uh, you know, how he affects the game, like, yeah, you can, you can arguably say he's underrated now, you know, um, even though he shouldn't be, like, the stuff that he's done, of course, is just speak for itself, you know. But you know, everybody has their own opinion. Um, but you know, as a, as a teammate, though, I, I I see the you know what he does in his production. So, uh, so I'm uh, I'm glad to be on the team with him. Oh yeah. All right, and then last ones. I want to talk to you. You said like eventually you want to be fully tattooed. So taboo spots. Would you touch the the neck, the hands, and the face, or no? I would do the neck if my mom. It wasn't my mom, right? So my mom, me like, she, you know, a lot of, well, lets me get the test, but if I could, I had to cover all, I, I would have to be able to cover all of them up. Mm. Uh, but I would, but no, I'm not gonna do the neck. And then hands, uh, nah, I'm just not a big, I don't think it would look that good on me, specifically, like I just don't really think, but I wouldn't do that either. I feel like hands is something that I could, like one of the only places that like I can regret, okay. you know. Uh, but yeah, nothing, nothing like extra that I can't cover up on like a sweatsuit, you know. Okay. Yeah. So you, yeah. So you're like, if you're wearing a suit, you don't want your fat showing. The only place I would would be the neck, but I'm not gonna do the neck.